page 147, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Nothing but the blood. We've already entered into his gates with thanksgiving. We've already prayed. And now it's time for us to let go and let God. Amen. Amen. Edward Stevens to come forward this morning. Following our altar call, we'll have our welcome by Dickness Ann Acri, and then a selection from our outstanding music ministry. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, church. Good morning. Sweet hour of prayer. Yes. 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 Sweet hour of prayer. Yes. That calls us from the world of care. And bids us at the master's throne to make all our wants and wishes known. Let us pray, church. Our Father and our God. Lord, it is once more and again 
that some of his servants have gathered together on another Sabbath morning within these sacred walls. First of all, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. Oh God, you are worthy to be praised. Yes, yes, yes Lord. Yes. And we lift your name this morning, Father, yes, in worship yes. and in song. Yes. Hallowed be your holy name. Yes, yes. Nothing that we can do, Lord, to reduce your holiness. Jesus. Nothing that we can do, Lord, to make you small. You are the great and almighty everlasting God. Yes, God. And we will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And then, Father, we gather to give you thanks this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us, each one, up until this present moment in time. Thank you. you kept us safe, Father, as we traveled the highways and byways of yes. this earthly existence. Thank you, Father. Going about our daily tasks. For that we say thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Father, for the necessities of life that are provided for us. Yes. The food on our table. Yes, God. Thank you. The clothes on our back. Yes. The roof over our head, Father. Yes, Lord. You have provided it all. We thank you, Father, for family and yes. loved ones and friends who support us Lord, yes. and provide comfort uh, for us in our time of need. Yes. Oh, God, you are a good God. Yes. We will continue to give your name to praise. Yes. We thank you, Father, for just keeping us from day to day. Just keeping us, Lord, in, 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 in health and, and strength that we're Thank able you. to go about our task. Thank you, Lord. Thank that we're able to just come and go. Yes. That we're able to assemble together in this place one yes. more time. Father, yes. To give your name, your honor, and Thank praise. You, Lord. Thank oh, thank you, Father. You've been Thank so you. good to each one of us. Lord. Yes. And now, Father, we also like to come before you to make our petitions known. Lord, I pray yes, for every individual gathered within these walls on this Sabbath morning. I pray for every household, Father. I pray that your blessings will be upon each one, Father. Whatever needs there might be, Lord, provide them, Father, in accordance with your riches and Father, we know that if we call upon your name in faith, trusting and believing that you have all power in your mighty hand, Father, the blessings will come down, Father. And so, Lord, we ask, we don't know what individual needs are, Father, but, Lord, you know, you know. Supply each need, Father, in accordance with your riches and glory. We will just lift you up, Lord. We will just continue to honor you. Continue to praise you, Father. Continue to seek your face. And then, Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, that you've been so good to us. Even those times we haven't been good to ourselves, Lord. You've kept us, Father. You are willing and patient. You are long-suffering, God, Lord, and you watch over your own. You give us opportunity, Father, to come back to your graces when we have strayed. If we come back with repentant hearts, Father, you are willing to forgive, and you continue to bless and keep us. And so, Father, we just pray, Father, for each family, for each household, and then, Lord, we pray that your word would reach out beyond these walls into the wider community, Father. Yes. Lord, we know there's no limit to your blessings, Father. The 
is not held within any bounds, Lord, but they are universal, and they go wherever you please, Father. So we're just asking your blessings upon our church. Lord, bless this community of faith that we call Ebenezer Baptist Church. We ask you to bless its leaders, Lord. Bless Pastor Thompson, Father. Give him, fill him, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. And, and give him the power and the spirit to lead your people as you would have them to go, Father. And help each one of us, Lord, to be supportive of him, to provide that help when help is needed, Father. We just want to do your will, Father. In our human frailties, we're going to stumble and fail sometimes, Lord. But pick us up, Father. Carry us in your bosom. And just guide us and keep us, Father. Walk with us each and every day of our lives. Guide our footsteps, Lord, where you would have us to go. And we will just continue to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We say this in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
October, as we normally do. Anybody celebrating a birthday or anniversary in the month of October, would you please stand?
gratefulness. When you look back over your life and you just think about where God has brought you from. I don't know about you, but I'm just so grateful because I know where I come from and I know what my life would have been without the Lord. So we have to be grateful for what he does and how he carried us through our trials and tribulations. But one thing I want you to know, it ain't over. To God says it's over. And we have to continue to praise the Lord and remember that he's already done. It's already done. So all we have to do is trust him and be grateful. Give a joyful noise unto the Lord and let him know that we are grateful. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the trial, we are grateful because he brought us this far and he promised never to leave us. So saints, don't give up. It's already done. Just have the faith to believe that it's already done. Amen? Amen, amen. Well, I give God praise, glory, and honor to stand behind this sacred desk this morning again. Um, every time I stand here, I am nervous. <laughs> Believe it or not, I am nervous. But one of my um, preaching friends said to me, he said, if you're not nervous, then you're into self. And I believe that because there are times when God will give us a word that we may not understand. And we're like, God, why you give me that word? You know, but he knows what's best for us. Amen. So I'm here today to um, just impart to you what God has given to me for his saints and for his children. So I invite you right now to turn with me to James, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read the first through the 10th verse. Let us pray first. Merciful God, as I come before you, Father God, I remember that I am your willing vessel. Lord God, it doesn't matter how it goes or what happens, God, but the point of the matter is, God, that they hear the word of God. And as they hear the word of God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Father God, they will apply the word of God, not looking at me the, the, who brings the word, Father God, but Lord God, let them hear the word of God. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will allow me to decrease, Father God that I will slow down so that the word will be given, Father God, in a manner in which you are pleased, Father God. I pray right now in Jesus' name for every person in here, Father God, that, Lord God, that you will touch, that you, Father God, will send your word and let them hide it in their heart, Father God, that they will receive the word, Father God, and that it will be a blessing to them. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to be reading from James, the fourth chapter, the first through the ten first. And as it is our custom in Ebenezer, maybe please stand. Amen. And I'll be reading the first to the ten first. And it reads as follows. From whence come wars and fighting among you? Can they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Yea, lust and have not. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have, and you cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust, ye adulteress and adulteress. Know ye that, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will, plea, he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. And verse 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. 
The word of God is already blessed. You may be seated. As I was reading this verse or this scripture, it reminded me of when I was a little girl. And I always wanted to play with my brother's toys. <laughs> I had five brothers and one sister. They seemed to have the coolest, most interesting toys that were both thought-provoking and also allowed them to be creative and at times even innovative. You see, I grew up in a household full of brothers and one sister. My brothers would not allow me to play games with them. However, me and my friend Janice Thomas would always find a way to be included or at times even sabotage them. <laughs> I remember one Christmas asking my parents for something other than a doll. But as with every Christmas, came disappointment. Because yes, I got a doll. <laughs> Not that I was ungrateful because every doll that I received was the latest trend. You know, Chatty Cathy, Dumbelina, <laughs> Bobby and the likes. You know those dolls. But that's not what I wanted. So I would pout and cry and allow my brothers to run over them with their trucks or with their trains or do something outlandish, anything to get rid of those dolls because that's not what I asked for. I wanted what I wanted. However, what I didn't understand was the sacrifices that my parents made to get these items for me, my sister, and my brother. My selfishness did not allow me to see past my own desires and to think of others. We all been guilty of that. At one time or another, when we didn't get what we expect, we often retreated into our little world or quarreled amongst ourselves and became jealous or envious of each other, allowing the enemy to permeate our thoughts, our actions, and our intentions. But why? The answer lies in our scripture lesson, which is taken from James 4, 1 through 10. James poses the question. He says, do you know where fights and arguments come from? He tells us. They come from the selfish desires that make war inside of you. Think about that. You see, we want things, but we don't know how to get them. So what do we do? We kill and are jealous of others, but we still cannot get what we want. So we resort to arguing and fighting. And if we don't get what we want, it's because we don't ask God. Or when we do ask God, we don't receive anything because we ask for wrong reasons. We only want to use it for our pleasure. In other words, I want this because I want to show you something, or I want that. I want that Mercedes Benz. I want that large house. I want this, and I want that. But James says, are you asking God for the right reasons? Are you just doing it for selfish reasons and selfish motives? That's right. James admonishes us by telling us the reason we don't get what we want is because we don't ask God. Or when we ask, we ask with wrong motives only to use what we receive to show off and bring glory to ourselves and not God. You see, we find ourselves wanting more and more, and we are never satisfied. I remember one of the millionaires saying, you know, the more I get, the more I want. That's selfish. And what happens as a result of this, as it, it causes an internal battle within us, we desire more prestige, more money, more control, more status, and if we don't get it, what do we do? We fight and we argue. We kill each other, literally and figuratively, because most of us use that most powerful thing that we have. And you know what that is? The tongue. Our words. We say things that we may regret, but oftentimes we can't take back. We put it out there, but we have to remember, it stays out there. It hurts, it wounds, it discourages. But we put it out there anyway because we want what we want. 
The word of God says in Philippians 2, 3 to 4, it says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for only your interests, but take an interest in others too. Why? Because selfishness causes conflicts. And jealousy says, I want what you have. We can't have that. We have to stop doing that. But it also says that through the scriptures, we are taught that God will always hear our prayers and will answer them if we address him with faith and real intent. Isaiah 65, 24 states, before they call, I will answer. Isn't that a precious promise? Before you even call, God will answer while you're just speaking. God says, I hear you. I hear what you want. God anticipates the needs, and his love lays the foundation for us being or being given or being granted what we've already asked for before we can even ask for it. He knows if our intentions are good, if they're bad, if they're evil, if they're hateful. He knows the true meaning and motives of our prayers. He's a heart reader. You can't fool him. And even when we think we're fooling him or he's unaware of the true meaning of our prayer requests, we are only fooling ourselves. God looks at us. Remember, he's the creator. He knows us. He formed us in our mother's wounds. He knows everything about us. So we have to ask ourselves, is what we're asking for, is it something that will benefit others? Will it glorify God? And the answer is, it should. So the real question becomes, why does God not hear our prayers? He said in James, he said, because People are not faithful to God. You should know the loving, that loving the world has the same, is the same as hating God. We can't love the world and love God at the same time. We can't love mamma and love God at the same time. We can't serve it. We can't serve money. We can't serve our own selfish desires, our needs, and our wants. You see, God wants us to prosper and is happy, but not at the expense of others. If we have to hurt someone or step over someone or discredit or slander someone to get what we want, it discredits God and it goes against his will and, it, and, our, and his plans for our lives. We can't do it. We can't have selfish motives. We can't berate, speak ill, torture, torment, with our words, actions, or deeds. We have to be mindful of what we do to others and how we do it. Because he says it discredits, our actions discredit God. And we as Christians, as the definition says, we are Christ-like. And we are the only things or the only image of God that people see. So when they see you backbiting, tattling, going against the word of God, what do they do? Huh. I know I would say, I don't want to be like that. Why would I serve a God like that? Why would I even want to go to church or be amongst these people? And see, we have to be mindful of that. So James tells us that anyone who wants to be friends with this evil world becomes enemies with God. He said the scriptures mean something. They say that the Spirit of God made us alive and only wants us to himself. He wants to bless us. He wants to prosper us. He wants to heal us. He wants to elevate us. But he can't do that unless we divorce ourselves of all this malice, hatred, envy, and jealousy. But the kindness God shows is greater as the scripture said, God is against the proud, but he is kind to the humble. You say, pride says, I want everything, 
no matter how I get it, who I hurt. On the other hand, humility says, if I humble myself before the Lord and wait patiently for him to answer, he will give me the desires of my heart. The word of God said, delight thyself in the Lord and he will give, the, he will give you the desires of your heart. He said, wait patiently for it and he will do it. That's his plan for your life. Jeremiah says he knows the plans for your life. So why are you fighting? Why are we fighting amongst each other? Each of us are one body jointly fitted together. Each of us have talents and gifts that God has bestowed upon us. Many of us have many gifts. But sometimes we may become discouraged because someone has spoken discouragement into your spirit. Or let their pride come before you. Let their selfishness and self-centeredness be the center attracted of it all. It's all about me. See me. See what I can do. I, 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 I. But as we learned in Sunday school this morning, he is the great I am. He is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He knows what's best for you. He knows what you have in need of, but you have to wait. Stop fighting. Stop it. Because as long as your prayers are for selfish motives, driven by pride, hidden in your heart, God is not going to answer you. Let me repeat that again. As long as your prayers are for selfish motives, driven by pride, hidden in your heart, God is not going to answer them. In other words, he says this, if we condone sin knowingly, whether it's happening to you or to someone else, and we don't correct it, you regard iniquity in your heart. That means we're wicked. That means we love violence. We hate the soul. We hate what God says for us to do. When we, we as Christians and as believers stand by and do nothing, we are guilty, the word of God says. In Psalms 11.5, it tells us, the Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur, a scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Upright men will see his face. So wickedness, evil, malice, violence, God hates it all. And we should forget about him answering our prayers. So what do we do then? Jane paints a clear picture. And he gives us several ways in which we can rid ourselves of that. And church, I pray that today we will begin to just look at what James tells us and apply it and, it, and hide it in our hearts. The first thing he tells us to do is to give ourselves to God. Yield to God's authority. Obey him. Give yourself to God. Well, you know, I hear that all the time. What does that mean? It means submit your life to God. Don't conform to worldly things and, and, and sinful ways. Don't let the world mold you. You mold the world. You set the example. You let the Holy Spirit and the power of God work through you to transform others. Not we conform, but we transform. We renew our minds. We get together with other saints and other Christians and we pray and we bombard heaven on behalf of the situation. The next thing he tells us to do, he says, stand against the devil and he will depart from you. You know, one thing I love about uh, Satan, and I have to say this, and I'm sure you've heard me say this often, Satan loves it when Christians fight. <laughs> he loves it. You know why? Because we're doing his job for him. 
You have to understand that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he knows that as long as we are fighting and quarreling amongst each other, as long as we're out of his will, as long as we're not on one accord, he's standing back and saying, oh, I'm winning. Oh, look at me. I'm winning this battle because they're out of the will of God. They're not praying. They're not fasting. They're not coming together in fellowship. All they're doing is quarreling and fighting amongst each other, pointing fingers. You did this. You did that. But can you imagine if God held us to the same standards? Can you imagine if God judged us the same way as we judge each other? So as long as we separate ourselves and cause division amongst ourselves, he's winning. He's happy because he's accomplishing his mission to divide and conquer. So what do we have to do in order for him not to do that? Address your sins. You know what you're guilty of. Every last one of us have a part to, be, to play. We're guilty as charged. None of us are perfect. None of us can do what God can do. But when we let go and when we let God, he can do all things, not some things. He will do all things. But you know what? If we plant that seed, if we let that seed that Satan has planted in our heart, that seed of bitterness, that seed of unforgiveness, that seed of malice and resentment, if we let that live in our heart, it will spread amongst each and every one of us. So we have a part to play. You see, God already knows about it, and he wants to see if we're sincere enough to come to him with our issues or simply remain out of his will. The third thing that James tells us to do, he says, come near to God. He will come near to you. We're sinners. So clean sin out of our lives. We have to take pride out of our lives. We're trying to follow the world and God at the same time. He says, come near to me. Stay in my presence. Seek my presence. Develop a hunger for me. Ask me for my will to be done. Not your will. My will to be done. Because we can't do this alone. We have to come together and do it for each other. We have to, saints. We didn't survive 108 years divided. We survived 108 years because we came this far by faith. Our ancestors and those who came before us, those who we stand on the shoulders of, they didn't make half the money we make now. But what happened? Yeah. They maintained this church. They maintained it because they had a spirit of faith and perseverance and they said for God I live and for God I die and this building this building this holy place this holy tabernacle I'm accountable I'm going to take responsibility to make sure that it endures and with the help of the Holy Spirit it shall endure nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God but we can't do it alone. We have to get together, saints. We need the Lord. Stop trying to do his job. Our job is to pray, fast, meditate, call on Christian friends and partner together and intercede for our church and for yourselves. Bombard heaven with his word, and I guarantee you that you will see results because that's his will, bombarding heaven. Let his will be done and not ours. The fourth thing we have to do, we have to make our thinking pure. So what does that mean? What do you mean make your thinking pure? Jesus was the only pure thing, only pure person to walk the earth. He says, stop desiring worldly things or finding more pleasure 
and what man sees as success and pray for God's will to be done in your life. You see, what we see now, it's temporal. <laughs> but what God sees is, is eternal. He sees past our humanity. He sees what we can't see. He knows the end results. He knows all. That's why Romans 12 tells us to be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. We can't renew our own minds because we're sinful. We're sinful by nature. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquities. Our mind has a will apart from God. And what that means is it's different. It opposes God. We may not think so. We may, we may think that we're doing the right thing, but no. When we are sinful, when we um, regard ourselves or esteem ourselves higher than others, we are opposing God. Our mind has a tendency to lean towards disobedience. It's human nature. But when God works in our lives to transform us, we will be capable of knowing, understanding, and accepting his will. Why? Because he gives us grace. And by God's grace, I mean he gives us what we don't deserve. How many times have you sinned? And God said, you know what? Slate white came clean. Debt canceled. So why? Why are we not extending that same grace? Why are we keep judging and fighting? This is a new day and a new season where God wants us to prosper. He wants the Holy Spirit to transform us, to renew us from the inside out, to sanctify us. He wants to change us. He wants to purify us like gold. You see, with gold, it's in the fire. And he burns out that dross and that ugliness. He keeps burning it, burning it, burning it until something pure and beautiful comes out. That's the same thing he wants to do for each and every one of us. He wants to burn out all that hatred and ugliness and malice and quality. He wants to burn it out of us. That's why we go through. Because he's not through with us yet. He's not through with us. You think these trials and tribulations are for naught? No. It's because God wants to do a new thing in each and every one of us. And if we let the Holy Spirit do it, we will succeed. We have to cancel Satan's assignment in the name of Jesus. We have to tell Satan, get your hands off of it. We belong to God. We are his children and the sheep of his pasture. And until we do that, until we decide that we will no longer be conformed and follow the world, he can't answer us. He can't. He's a loving God who does not look upon sin. He knows our hearts. He knows us. He says to confess your sins. He says if we confess our sins, we always hear this, and I've been hearing it for the last three sermons, so it's relevant. He says if we confess our sins, speak it, bring it before the Lord. He is faithful enough to forgive us for our sins and to save us from all unrighteousness. That's a precious promise. Confession. Let it out, as Pastor Ong said last week. Let it out. Become transparent. Go before the Lord. Lord, I am a sinner. I'm hateful inside. I'm ugly. I do things that I don't want to do. Like Paul says, even when I want to do good, evil is on every side. That's because we're falling. We're not going to be perfect. But what we can do is go to the Lord and ask him to make us clean inside. He said, be sad, be sorry, and cry. He said, change your laughter into crying. In other words, step out of yourself 
It ain't about you. Step out of yourself. Let God do the work. Repent. Truly be sorry for what you do. Don't just say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. And the next week you back at it again. That's not how it works. Repentance means to repent, be sorry for it, and don't revisit it again. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not easy. Because if you're a gossiper, you're going to gossip. But if you ask God, God, help me not to gossip seven times a week, maybe you'll count it down to two. <laughs> or whatever your vice is, God will help you through it. But you have to confess it. It's like an addict. He has to confess and acknowledge that he is an addict. And once he does that, all scales, it starts to break down. I know, I've, I've, I've confessed it. Now it's time for me to get it out. Finally, he says, be humble before the Lord, and he will make you great. Submitting is God's ways of saying it means to humble yourself. Remember, Christ is perfection, not us. We fall short of God's standards every single day. How? Through sin. But one thing we have to remember, he is deserving of our praise. Praise him. Praise him. It's only through the grace of God that we are able to be saved. So many times we're in church doing all these things, you know, oh, I'm on this, I'm on that. I do this, I do that. Without him, we would get what we deserve, and that's death. We have to accept God's grace and stop counting on our good works. Because when we stand before God, he's not going to say, girl, you know what? You was in the choir, you did this, you did that. You know what he's going to say? What did you do for others? How did you treat others? Did you judge them? Were you mean to them? Did you feed them? Did you clothe them? Did you visit them in prison? No, God, but you know what? I was on this and my spiritual resume. And I'll never forget Barbara did a, a, a play about the spiritual resume. And it's about this woman who had all these things. She did everything in the church. But her heart was not right. Her heart. And we have to understand that it's by grace we are saved. It's a gift from God. At least any of us should boast. So we have to cherish that gift from God. That gift of grace. That grace that says, even though I've done what I've done, Lord, you didn't punish me the way I deserve. Remember this, guys. Remember God knows what's best for us. And in the easy-to-read version in the Bible, in 1 John 5, 14, 15, it says, we can come to God with no doubts. This means that when we ask God for things and those things agree with what God wants for us, God cares about what we say. He listens to every time we ask him. So we know that he gives us whatever we ask him for. But the question is, what are we asking for? And how are we asking for it? And will it benefit others? And the way we know that God has answered our prayers is in our heart. We feel confirmation. We feel the peace of God. We feel the calmness of God. We feel the sweetness of God. We feel everything is fine because we're in the will of God. So I advise you, I admonish each of you to pray, not a selfish prayer, but remember to pray this prayer. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And believe me, he may not come when you want him. I know that's um, cliche. I'm sorry, it's a cliche. He may not come when you want him. It may be delayed, but it's not denied. If you pray God's will, stop arguing, stop quarreling, 
Stop thinking of yourself better than others. Stop being evil and malice and hatred and judging others. I guarantee you, God will answer us. Amen? Amen. The doors of the church are open. And I know that um, we may not have visitors. Are there any visitors? Do we have family? Are we, are we all family? I would say to each of you that we have to examine ourselves because this is the first Sunday. And as the first Sunday, remember, this is a covenant. This is a sacred sacrifice that we're making with God. He says, let a man examine himself. We don't want to eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. We don't want that. So what we want the Lord to do is, Lord, examine us. Each and every one of us. And God, if we're holding anything against one another, make us over God. Make us over in the image of Christ and let that Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of us. Yes, the Holy Spirit does dwell in us because we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes, saints. We're going to do things that may not please everyone. We may fall short, but one thing for sure, if you put your hands in God's hand, and trust him to transform you, to sanctify you, to purify you. You'll come out as pure gold. He'll give you that peace. The peace which surpasses all understanding. When you walk through the fire, you won't get burned. When you go through the water, you won't drown. He'll make sure that his hand and your hand are clasped tight. But we have to ask him to make us over. And I invite you today to ask the Lord to make you over again. Ebenezer, God's got great plans for us, but we cannot continue to block what God has for us because of unforgiveness. We, not, we can't continue to block the blessings so what I ask each of you right now, stop and pray. Let us pray that God will give us that spirit of love, unity, forgiveness, and that we will accept that we are children of the Most High God. And that the Holy Spirit never left us, God, but sometimes we just laid it down for our own selfish motives. But we're here, God, today. Oh, God. To say, God, make us sober. Cleanse us and purify us, God. Because we want to be like Christ. And Lord, I thank you for every person in here who've come, who've given themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will bless them abundantly and let us put our hands to the gospel plow and do what thus saith the Lord. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So, Lord, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus to convict us, strengthen us, and allow us, God, to be on one accord as one body in Christ. And then, Lord, I believe you will answer our prayers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. that means Lord make me over he gives us a do over church do over it's like when you make a mistake and your parent says you know what I'm not going to spank you this time you know why I'm not going to spank you because I love you but I'm going to let you see that when you make your mistakes 
There's consequences. There's consequences. And the devil knows that too. So I want each and every one of you to be blessed. I pray that your prayers will always be answered. But understand, you must do it in the right way. Amen. 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 Well, it's our custom. It's Communion Sunday, and we come to the table right now, and we want to put up our church covenant. It's time for our church covenant, and it's up on the screen. So can we all please stand? And we will, read, we will read it as one. Let's read it slowly. And, and just understand the words. Listen to the words. Amen. It says, having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. We do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness. To give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin. To sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine. To contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry amongst us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men, to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joy, and with tender sympathy bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. Being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and do life amid evil report and good report, to seek the glory of God, and who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we move from this place, we will engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. Amen. to 
The Bible says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had break it, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And at the same manner, he took the blood. And he said, this blood is the New Testament in my, in my body. He said, drink, eat all of it. For as often as you drink it and um, eat it, you will show the Lord's death till he comes. So now we prepare ourselves for the body and the blood for partaking of this holy sacrament. Does everyone have their sacraments with them? Does anyone need anything? Do you all have it? Amen. He said, who can take this sup? Who can sup? He's, he says, he who has a clean heart, where there's no sin in their heart. So I invite you at this time to just ask God for forgiveness. Ask him to search your heart. Search it. And for him to know you, only you know what you've done or what you're up against. And remember, God is able to forgive us. On the night in which he was betrayed, he gave us a lesson. He said, he gave us the um, bread, which is a symbol of his body. And he gave us the wine, which is a symbol of his blood. And he said, for I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he had given thanks and he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup. And when he had sucked, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do, do ye as often as you drink this bread, eat this bread and drink this cup. You do, do, you do it in remembrance of me. At this time, we're going to bless the bread and the wine. Father God, we consecrate ourselves and dedicate ourselves to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we know that you gave your life for us. You gave us eternity, Father God, through the blood of Jesus, by the breaking of your body and by the shedding of your blood, Father God. So we ask you right now in the name of Jesus to bless this bread and bless this blood. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us all stand to our feet. Again, this is the bread which symbolizes the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Eat, eat, all. eat. He took the cup, and when he had supped, he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you in remembrance of me, for as often as you do it, you show the Lord's death till he comes, drink you all. There is nothing written that says that there's a benediction. So what I would ask you to, you to do is God bless you all. May the Lord bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace in Jesus' name.
and all.